What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I am here with tonight's All Tea, All Shade, Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 4, Episode 2 Review. Okay, so on tonight's episode, Amara La Negra is back, and she is slim and trim. She has lost a ton of weight, and she looks great. I think she looks beautiful, skinny, and thickums. Um, but she is not happy with her singing career, so she has gotten into real estate. Um, she's deciding to make the Dominican Republic her second home, and she got her new boo thing named Alan. Who gives me trade, like gives me thug trade. <laughs> like he cute or whatever. Not his body cute, but his hair ain't cute. Like I'm really not feeling that S curl. And then when he put his head into the camera, it's real thin up in top. Um like he needs some filler up in there. He not an ugly man though. He cute though, but he gives me very much pride for it. <laughs> So she is in love. She got her some new dick, baby. Uh, some dick with money now. She ain't fucking with Shay broke ass brother. But her mammy, of course, is not happy about this. Her mama once again is trying to run her life. She got a love hate relationship with her boyfriend. They up on the uh, rooftop of the, some building that she's invested in, and she asks the boyfriend for a kiss in front of the mama, and they get the tongue kissing in front of the mama. And I'm like, what kind of Cinemax? Pornhub after dark type of shit is this that was disgusting y'all could have saved that for another time and the mama just sitting there looking at them staring at them like what the fuck is going on and she wouldn't stop staring which was even weird because I felt like she wanted to get in on the kiss everything was just weird about that moment I hated Amara thin ass wig with them split ass bangs looking like chopsticks I just didn't understand the Jesus it was just too much going on with my spirit I got enough going on in my life so Sookie with the good pussy is back, baby. Did Sookie get breast implants? Because her boobs are much bigger than what they were. Um, and she has a new store that she is opening up called Good Cat. <laughs> I love the name. And her cousin Isaiah is going to be the store manager. And them two together are fun on me. Like, I just want to see Sookie get her own reality show with her, her nigga and her family. And I think that would be hilarious. So, the store gives me very much Miami Ghetto Hustler. Um, it was a bunch of, like, uh, stripper shoes and cat suits and fake Chanel and fake Fendi in there. I'm like, girl, you're going to go to jail. <laughs> this is not Canal Street up in this bitch. Um, she tell her cousin Isaiah that she is determined to have a baby with her nigga and ain't nobody going to stop her. Like, you can't tell me shit about nothing. So, she, however, does not know if her cousin Isaiah is equipped with running her store because... According to her, he's even hooder than she is. And I was like, I cannot imagine anybody being more hooder than Sookie. But then we find out that it is, in fact, true. When Isaiah was like, girl, you act like I ain't worked in retail for three years. And Sookie was like, where you didn't work in retail at? And he was like, City Trends, Popeyes, KFC. <laughs> Even Sookie was looking at him like, the fuck? <laughs> so she was like, this ain't City Trends, Popeyes, or none of that shit. This is good cat, honey. I was hollering. I need to see more of her and his cousin together because it was hilarious. So Ace Hood wife, Shayla, I think that's how you pronounce her name, Shayla, uh, Shay Sheila, or something like that. Very beautiful girl, very pretty. She's like on her self-help guru, black girl magic type shit. So she's at her home and her friend um, Aisha stops by who is fully pregnant and she asks her friend to send her some of that baby energy because she just recently suffered from a miscarriage. Um, they sit on the couch to talk and in her confessional, she goes over what happened the day she lost her baby. She says she just felt it. She started bleeding and she just turned on all the songs because she even made a playlist of all the songs for her baby that she was going to play for it. And she just had all these beautiful songs playing and she was just saying to the baby like don't leave like I want you so bad like don't leave and that was so sad that was so freaking sad but of course she ended up at miscarrying anyway um 
So Shayla tells her friend, you know, my dear husband, when it comes to emotions, he puts it all in the box. She was like, she literally told him she had a miscarriage. And he was like, oh, okay. I'm like, mm, I'm going to go to the gym. Um, but you saw on last week's episode when he talked to his mom about it that he, in fact, got emotional. Maybe he's just the type that he doesn't want to show his feelings to upset her so he could be the strong person for her. But she wants to know, like, that he cares and that this hurt him too like she wants him to be emotionally present and he is not and that's something that needs to be voiced to him and that needs to be worked on so uh she said that he did not comfort her and that that really triggered her and it would trigger any woman so ace hood has also lost though one of his twin daughters his twin daughter lyric passed away so that's another reason why i feel like he didn't fully go there with his emotions because he probably felt like he was spiral into some form of depression considering the fact that he's already lost a child. Um, and she says that, you know, um, he has never sought therapy for this. And that is something that really needs to happen for there to be healing taking place. So she says that during this whole miscarriage, it was like they were going against each other instead of coming together. And that's the worst thing that you can do in a situation like that is come apart instead of coming together because it just builds resentment within the relationship. So she says that they're hosting a Mother's Day event despite her going through what she just went through for their family, which is a huge thing because I wouldn't have been able to do a child. So Trina goes to the radio station to go to work in a bad mood because it's the day that her little brother was murdered. So she goes into the studio and she and Trick talk about the bad, the baddest bitch event that she had for her 20th anniversary in Atlanta and how he was mad that he wasn't initially invited. So she was like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry about that. Da, 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 da. He was like, you know, what are we going to do for our situation? No, we, what are we going to do? And he asked her all these questions and she just like, it was just like system overload, system overload. And then next thing you know, she just sort of going to fuck off the time so I got in a good mood today. My motherfucking brother just died today. I don't want to talk about this shit. I told y'all I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to deal with this shit. And she just stormed the fuck out and tricked me just sitting there. He was like, you left your phone, case. Because he's so used to her spazzing the fuck out like it really meant nothing to him. And even later on in the episode, later on that day when they linked up, he was like, she just need a minute. Like she spazzes out, then you give her a minute and she'll be all right. Um I understand that she's grieving the loss of her brother, but that still does not give you the right to just go off on people because you're not feeling good. You know what I'm saying? Like, the life still has to go on. There's a job that still needs to be done, and you just can't go cussing everybody out because your brother died. Like, that's just not an excuse. Um... So, Suki and her fiancé, Kill Bill, I love his name, take pictures for, I don't know if they're engagement photos. I don't know what in the hood shit this is. They look like they got on outfits from the swap meet. He got on his ankle bracelet, child. It was a ghetto mess. And her mama, Lori, comes so they can sit down and have this conversation about Suki and Kill Bill having a baby together. Um, Suki mother looks great for her age, like beautiful woman. She must have had Suki at a young age. She's a really pretty lady. So Kill Bill was like, We gonna have a baby right now. Like he is firm on that. And the mama was like, A year after marriage, y'all can because you can't slow down this momentum. And I get what the mama is saying. Um, you know, we're building momentum. You don't want to slow things down. You don't want companies to get afraid or be afraid to work with you because you know a lot of companies still have that old school mind frame that when a woman gets pregnant, they can't work, which is the dumbest shit ever. Um, so, Suki and Kill Bill argue the fact that, you know, Cardi B was pregnant and still worked. Nikki was pregnant and still worked. Young Miami was pregnant and still worked. And the mom was like, look, all I ask is for one year. Then y'all can do whatever the fuck y'all want to do. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's up to Suki. It's her body. It's her career. Like, all you can do is advise and she got to do what she got to do. It's not like she said she ain't got the money. She got the money. She's in a financially stable place to be able to take nine months to a year or whatever to have the baby. Let her do what she want to do. Shit. If it ends up being a bad move, move on her career, then she could only blame herself. Shit. 
So they have a gathering for Trina's little brother later on that day and she comes and Trina promises to watch her little baby niece so she can learn how to take care of a baby because she don't know how to fuck with kids at all and her and her nigga want to have a baby within the next year. Um, I think that'll be cute for Trina to have a little baby. You know, I can see her being a mama. I can so, Amara Mama fears that she's going to throw her career away if she stays in the Dominican Republic. But Amara tells us that she is happy there and she wants to settle down and have some kids. Like, she just feels like this is her time. Um, she talks about the situation with her uh, boo thing, Alan. And she says to him, like, you know, I want to be here with you, but my life and my job and everything is in Miami. Um, and he was like, you know, but I want you here with me because my life is here. He was like, look, I'll talk to your mama. And she was like, don't you be talking to my mama and you end up doing some shit later on that I don't like or you fuck me over because I'm going to fuck you up. And I was like, you better get his ass together. But I, I don't even understand why your 30 some year old ass is having another grown ass man to talk to your mama on your behalf. Like this shouldn't even be a conversation with your mama. You don't have to run nothing past your mama when it comes to your life and your life decisions and ask for her permission. What in the fuck is going on? Like her and her mama are too codependent on each other. That shit is weird, bro. So it's the day of the little Mother's Day event that Ace Hood is having and Ace Mama Blondie arrives and based off last week's episode, I ain't feeling her because she sat up there at that table talking about when he got with Shayla, he just cut her off and wasn't doing for her no more. Even though he's sitting there saying to her, it wasn't just about me having a wife, which is a reason why I have to take care of my wife and provide for me and my home, which is a valid reason for cutting you off financially but it was also uh, stem to the fact that he had he's not signed to a major label anymore and doing everything independent and his money went like it was so how can I afford to do my career independently take care of my wife and my home and my children and then take care of you and then you want to have an attitude about that your selfish ass girl you don't get the fuck out of my face like these mamas or a mess like how dare you like how the fuck dare you like girls bye he is not your man he is not supposed to pay your bills for you that was a blessing that he did what he could do for you like these mamas that think they are so entitled to their children's money like girl the fuck bye so um uh Shayla in her confession was like, you know, I would like to be respected as an adult when it comes to his mom and, you know, as his wife, as any woman would. So Shayla and the mama talk and she says to the mama, I didn't know how to deal with you two being into it. I was hearing that I was trying to replace you. Blondie says, I will call and you wouldn't answer. And in her confessional, Shayla was like, I don't answer nobody's call because I don't know what type of energy you're going to be bringing my way. But she then goes to say to the mama, even when I was, you know, being communicative to you, I felt like uh, you were out here talking behind my back. And Blondie was like, we not going to do this. We not going to play that blame game. Well, did you, bitch? Like, did you talk about her on the back? I can very much see you doing that. Because you, you seem like the type. She was like, um, it's Mother's Day. All I want is my family. Then we see um, everybody around the dinner table. And Ace gives a toast. And this time his jewelry does not fall off. I will never forget at the BET Awards years ago when he was on the red carpet being interviewed by Bow Wow. When that nigga fake watch broke on live television. I had to go back and find a clip for y'all. Because I was like these rappers and they fake ass jewelry that they be trying to pass the fuck off as real be cracking me the fuck up. And he had one of the most embarrassing moments on live television. Here is the video. Oh, shit. Oh, it's zooming on the watch. almost lost the Oh, what's going on? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, 
child, that fake ass kiosk <laughs> that he got from the middle of the mall. I don't know why these niggas be out here trying to front like they got on hundreds of thousands of dollars of jewelry and they album literally just came out yesterday. Like, nigga, we know it's not real. It's not real. You cannot afford it, my nigga. You have to pay the tax man. Like, it doesn't add up. But anyway, like I said, his jewelry didn't fall off today. You don't know if it's real or not. So Blondie at the table tells Shayla that one day she'll make a good mother. And it was very, like, I, I could see like she was trying, but the girl looked like she was about to bust into tears at any moment because, you know, it's a lot for her. She just had a miscarriage and we're celebrating Mother's Day and I don't have no baby. I'm mother, you know, it's just a lot. So Trina is late to her performance for Pride and the event manager is, of, of course, upset by this. Um... Trina just acting like it's everybody else's fault but hers and this person should have known this and this person should have known that. Well, when are you going to ever know anything, ma'am? So, Amara and Alan go to talk to her mammy. And the mama don't like that she is deciding to move to the Dominican Republic to be with her man. And she says that Alan is changing her mind about, you know, where to live and her career and this, that, and the third. And Amara was like, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to be singing and dancing for the rest of my life, mommy. And mama was like, so what happens to all the sacrifices that I made? It's frustrating. Bitch, I didn't know my life was for you. Like, it's not my fault that you poured everything into me and you never solidified anything for yourself. Yes, I am grateful and thankful that you poured into me so I can have all of these advantages and opportunities in life. But this is my life to live. I can't live my life for you, home girl. You need to get a situation of your own. I've done it. I've tried all for 30 some years. I gave my all. Now it's time for me to live for me. I have sacrificed a lot for this. Like, it's not like we out here broke, no money or whatever. I have set you up nicely with a beautiful home. I got the money to still financially take care of you. What is the problem? But the fact is, that Amara still acts like she is a five-year-old girl that has to ask her mama for permission to do this and that. Like, girl, you a grown-ass woman. The fact that you sitting up here with your man asking your mama, basically, can I be with my man, is ridiculous. The fuck? Especially when you paying for everything. Girl, if you don't grow the fuck up. So, um... Amara was like, I'm the one putting it in the work and has no friends. I'm always the one traveling, this, that, and the third. Which is the truth. Like, I have sacrificed my life for this career and it has not panned out how I envision like and, and it, I always ask this question at what point do you say enough is enough and give up on your dream like when is that moment where you just like okay I've tried but it's time for me to move on to something else so the mom was like what about me and I was like girl her and blondie need to be best friends so Amara was like i'm sorry that you sacrificed so much for me and it didn't turn out the way you wanted and she gets up and storms off upset and the mom was like you have too big of a career to move here and fall in love the mama mad because she ain't got no dick the mama mad because she ain't got no man and she want her daughter to be lonely and miserable just like her and let her uh have it her way Amara and her gonna be together for the rest of their lives on some uh gray gardens type shit girl don't you let your mama have you up in that damn house uh like the people in gray gardens the kennedys girl you don't you do like jack uh bouvier the bouvier is uh, side the family if you ain't never seen gray gardens the movie you better it is one of the best movies ever and the documentary is wonderful so yeah that was my review on love and hip-hop miami um i give the episode like I gave Atlanta a C minus. It was cool for what it was, but like I said on the other review, it's just not giving what it's supposed to give. We want the ratchet back. We need it back. This shit is boring. I feel like I'm watching own. <laughs> but um make sure you guys thumbs up this video, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell button. I love you guys and make sure to thumbs up this video. I will see you on the next one. Bye.